Hi, I'm Stephanie Laska. I lost 140 pounds and created Dirty Lazy Keto. Thanks for joining me here on the YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and enjoy the show. You might be wondering, um, hey, what's the best way to lose weight in 2022? Doesn't that sound weird to say? 2022. What's the best way to lose weight in 22? Well, if you plan on losing weight in 2022, I want you to give me a thumbs up, make a commitment, say it in the comments, tell me how much you're planning on losing. If you put it in there, it's more likely to happen. Um, and I've got a seven point plan to help you guys get started today. I've narrowed it down, the whole process to just seven points. I know, right? So easy when you put it that way. <laughs> but seriously, you guys, I know a lot of you saw me on the cover of Weight Women's World Magazine. I know. People are like, that's not you, that's a soap opera star. And I'm all, yeah, there I am. Very small in the corner. There I was. I was right there. But seriously, I've been in Women's World Magazine, I think three or four times now, in First for Women Magazine, Parade, Reader's Digest, um, Costco Connect, Men's Health, all sorts of different um, international and national publications. Because those, this, way of work, this way of eating, it really works. Dirty, lazy keto works. I'm not like some kind of, you know, omniscient person who like had a vision. This is how I actually lost weight. This is how I personally went from before and after weighing almost 300 pounds to the size that I am now. So it really does work. This is what I learned in my journey and I'm just determined to share it with as many people as possible. Because when I was growing up, people taught me the wrong things about nutrition. Does that happen to you? I had to learn this all from scratch and do it all really from trial and error. And I don't want you to have a lot of error. I just want you to have good success. So that is the amazing part. So I've got seven points to go over today and it's all great, simple, easy to do advice that's gonna help you to lose weight. And I think it's the best way to lose weight in 2022. It's true. So number one, ready? Got your pencil, got your pen, got your glasses. I'm such a dork. Number one really is that you need to start expecting progress from yourself and not perfection. What'd she just say? Expect progress from yourself, not perfection. That is the truth. And I think when you start toning down your expectations of yourself and changing what it is you're actually trying to achieve, all of a sudden you start being much more successful. And it's, it's funny though, because the all or nothing way of thinking you know, the people that are like, I have to be perfect. I have to do everything right. I have to do keto perfect, strict keto, count this, count that. And they get all obsessive and crazy. The second something goes wrong, you know what I mean? Where they're like, oh, I thought I was drinking, you know, sugar-free, whatever. And oh my goodness, there's two carbs. And then they freak and panic. And then this is what they do. They take the towel. And then they just throw it out. They throw out the towel. They throw in the towel, right? Throw it in, throw it out. They're like, oh my gosh, I made one mistake, or I gained one pound, or I went to happy hour once, and then suddenly all is lost, and they just give up. Has anyone done that before? <laughs> We're all victims to that, right? This is honest. We're just being real. But I think when you start to put a check on that, and you realize, you know what? I don't have to be perfect to be successful with weight loss. I don't have to do everything by the book. I can kind of do things my way, and big picture, this is still going to work out. So my best advice to lose weight in 2022, this is tip number one, don't throw in the towel. You wanna to start expecting more about progress from yourself, little baby steps, instead of trying to be perfect. I think you'll do a lot better. So that's tip number one. That's easy, right? Check. Tip number two. Ready? I want you to start setting more realistic, doable goals doable goals, like realistic goals. Like, uh, I don't want to run like 50 miles tomorrow if I've never ran before. And another unrealistic goal would be like, oh, I want to weigh the same as I did freshman year in high school. No, that's not realistic. How about we set more realistic goals that are doable and actionable? And I call these SMART goals, which stands for, do you know? Do you know what SMART stands for? Specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time sensitive. So when you choose a goal that is all of those things, specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time sensitive, you will start to gain more confidence because you'll start achieving that goal. 
and you'll also start getting more momentum. And I want to give you an example of this. I know I hinted at walking earlier and you're like, or running, and you guys are all like, what? What's she talking about? Um, but I was close to age 40 the first time I ever started to break into any kind of a run. And um, I had avoided PE in high school and never done any type of physical activity. And by the time I was losing weight and wanting to, you know, get out there, I had to start just by walking around the block. And that did not go very fast. It was like a one walk around the block. And then the next time I went out, or maybe a couple times later, I upped it just a little bit more, maybe one and a half times around the block. And then two, and then three, and then four. And before you know it, I was trying to get between, you know, this house and that house. And then maybe a little bit faster of a walk. And before you know it, I know, so exciting. I worked myself all the way up to the distance of a marathon, which is 26.2 miles. This is somebody who weighed 300 pounds and then went down to my size. I know, never have run in my life, and I ended up running the New York City Marathon as a sponsored athlete from Power Bar. Here was the t-shirt they gave us at the expo, and I never wear it because I'm so afraid I'm gonna like mess it up. I know, it's so stupid, I should wear it all the time. Um, but this was a New York City Marathon. It was so amazing, and here I am. I mean, look at this, I have a size small shirt, and I got this amazing medal, and Power Bar brought me there and gave me all this special fancy stuff, made me feel all important. I know, but this all happened because I set a small, doable, realistic goal to begin with, and then slowly and incrementally, once I had more success, then I started to push the envelope and make my goals just a little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further. It works, you start to build, and that momentum is really exciting. So can you think of a very specific measurable, actionable, realistic goal that you have for yourself. I hope you'll share it in the comments because I am going to pick someone at random from the comments to win a prize. And I happen to have my, my wheel of excitement behind me. Can you see it okay? I'm going to spin the wheel and we'll see what kind of prize we're going to give out today. I know I love, I love the wheel. It makes me feel like Vanna. Ready? And I'll be choosing someone from the comments at random to win this prize. It's going to be big whammies. Oh, Ooh, it's going to be a blue cutting board, a blue custom dirty, lazy keto cutting board. How exciting. So make sure you're participating a lot in the comments. Okay. And tell me your goal. That can be a great way to get started by talking in the comments. Um, step number three. These are the things that I think you can do to start losing weight and be successful in 2022 is this is what I call the just just one more strategy, just one more, one more. Is this going the right way? Just one more strategy. This is tip number three, just one more. I want you to think about what you can do to add to your life, not subtract, like a positive thing, something you can add. What's one more thing that you can do every day to make a difference in losing weight in 2022? So for example, what's one more thing you could do? Could you? drink one more bottle of water a day. Is that doable? I know this seems silly. You're like, that's not gonna make a difference. But really it does. It's these little things that add up and build momentum, confidence, um, and help push you toward your goal incrementally. And that's really the secret to success. That's how I got myself, remember, from the marathon story? From you know slightly going around the block to the mailbox to all of a sudden being able to run 26.2 miles. So think about what's the one thing that you could do today to start making a difference. If it's not a maybe one more glass of water, maybe it's, did anyone say one more vegetable a day? One more, not like a million, just one. Can you do one more vegetable a day? Can you? Can you commit to that right now? Because I think this is the kind of thing that will really make the difference for you. Did anybody say for their one more strategy they're gonna do one more home-cooked meal? Was that anyone's? idea. Because it's funny, when you have a home-cooked meal, you're in charge of what the ingredients are. You're in charge of the portion size. All sorts of positive things change. Now, if you're not a cook, which apparently like more than half of America doesn't cook at all, you're not alone. But perhaps you could just start by one home-cooked meal a week at home. Just one. 
or one, home, one meal eating at home a day if you want to be really aggressive. Depends on where you're at, right? Um, if you need help or, you know, more ideas, you guys, I have four cookbooks now. So we have the five ingredient cookbook. I've got the dirt cheap cookbook if you need more budget. The original dirt, uh, the original dirty lazy keto cookbook. And then one of your all time favorites if you're not a big cook would be uh, the no time to cook cookbook. I know they're all the dirty lazy keto cookbooks. There's four of them, four to choose from. And you can always check your local library. A lot of the books are located there. Many of these are USA Today bestsellers, and they've been out. So if you're not checking on Amazon or Barnes & Noble, you can also check your local library. Good idea, right? Then you'll have some ideas on how to cook that one more home-cooked meal at home. So hopefully we got some one more things that you can do. You ready for number four? Are you keeping track? Are you writing these down? Okay, tip number four is I want you to stop obsessing about fat. People on keto in general just get so hung up on fat. They're constantly like, my, my fat grams and my, I got to get my fats in and I'm having my fat bomb and how much fat is in that? And they're just blah, 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 fat, fat, fat. You got to let it go, people. Stop obsessing about fat. And the reason why I'm going to tell you is that on Dirty Lazy Keto, there's no fat goal. Can I say it again? No fat goal. No goal. You do not have to get your fats in. That is a myth and you got to stop doing that. So let it go. Did you hear me? <laughs> Seriously, this is a big problem. People eat so much fat that they end up gaining weight on a keto diet. You got to let it go. What I would like to suggest that you do instead, because you're all, wait a minute, keto is a higher fat diet. Yes, it is, but not to the point of reaching a goal. You're not just eating fat for no reason. So many people will like, just start eating spoonfuls of it. And I'm like, no, no. What I recommend you do instead, and I know this may not look that attractive, but forgive me. This is a cream of spinach, is use your fat to make healthy food taste better. And what I mean by that is exactly like this. You make food, healthy food, with fat so that it tastes better, it's palatable, it goes down easier, you're excited to eat it, it makes you happy. Spinach is like, eh, who wants to eat spinach? But cream of spinach, sign me up. I could eat a truckload of this stuff because it's so delicious and tasty, right? Because it has like cream and all sorts of yummy cheeses. Do you see where I'm going with that? I have to put the top back on because I'll be eating this after our show. What's another way you could do that? Are you thinking of some more like ways to get fat in that's in a healthier way? I hope that you are brainstorming because this is a real key feature with Dirty Lazy Keto and what I feel like it's different from strict keto. So once you wrap your head around that, I think that you will do better and you'll start losing more weight in the year 2022. That's what we want to do, right? That's why we're here. Um, and just to put you at ease, I know you're kind of wondering like, well, wait a minute, I need to get in ketosis. I'm supposed to have fat. I will link up a video after this one just about ketosis because I want you to be able to recognize the signs and symptoms of ketosis easier. That way you know when you're in it and you can just stop obsessing about fat. So I will link that up after this one, okay? If I forget, remind me. Um, number five, I want you to start thinking about carbs. Like, not fat, focus on the carbs. And specifically, I recommend thinking about the type of carbs you're eating. How many? What's the quality? How often? Are you being really choosy about your kind of carbs? Are you counting them all? Are they sneaking in? Now, I know this is dirty keto. I'm the dirty, keto, dirty lazy keto queen after all, but I think it's easy to get caught up in some of these like convenience foods. Everyone's done it, right? These are pork rinds here. Um, people get obsessed and they end up spending all of their carbs then, you know, on sugar-free cookies and candy and chocolate and chips and all that kind of stuff like we used to eat. You know what I mean? Back when I was almost 300 pounds. This is the kind of stuff I love. Chips, cookies, cake, ice cream. I know. I get it. But if we're going to continue to eat this kind of stuff, the weight loss is going to be slow going, if not going in the other direction. So I'm not saying cut it out. I'm just saying focus on the type of carbs you're eating. Be really choosy. Make the best choices you can about the types of carbs you're eating, how often, and if you're being accurate or not, because you do have to keep track. 
This isn't lazy keto doesn't mean you just eat whatever you want. I know that's a myth too. I have a video for that. But you still have to be responsible. You still have to be accountable to yourself and be honest and then choose better carbs. Here's some more examples because I know you're like, well, what do I eat then? What do I eat? Here's another example of a type of carb that I like to eat. Now, I haven't put these in the oven yet, but these are, do you know what they're? <laughs> these are stuffed jalapeno peppers. So good. These are just some plain ones where I mixed um, cream cheese and some ranch powder and some shredded cheddar. And I just fill these raw jalapeno that have been cleaned and de-seeded, de -veined, cut in half. And I'm gonna pop these in my, um, probably in my uh, little toaster oven today on oven for 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. And they'll be just perfect. And the reason I gave this example here is this is a carb, which is confusing to people. A vegetable is a carb, that's fiber. Fiber is the good kind of um, carb that's in vegetables. And then there's fat inside. So you see how I'm using fat to make healthy food taste better? Does that make sense? It's still, it's a fat, it's a carb, but it's a better example on how you can use carbs in a different way than like stuff like this. You could eat the whole bag of these and still be hungry. Don't you think? You know I'm right. You're all sad. Don't be sad. Um, instead, you know, and it's not like you have to have everything with fat. I eat a ton of fresh vegetables. These are cucumbers here. I talk about cucumbers in a lot of my podcasts. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with them. I love them. But I cut them up and I put vinegar and Splenda. I know, so weird. And feta cheese and it's so tasty. And I use this all the time. I'll use it in, in a place of lettuce if I don't have lettuce. I'll put sauces on it. I'll do Alfredo sauce. I'll do pesto. I'll do Indian just like a plain old vegetable. But doing more zucchini, cucumber, asparagus, um, I don't know, green beans, cauliflower, all those low carb vegetables are gonna fill you up and this is a good way to spend your carbs. It'll fill up your stomach with healthy fiber, which makes you feel fuller for longer in addition to the fat that you're putting on. Like I mentioned, putting feta cheese on my cucumbers, it really does work. So think about that. It's a different way to examine the keto diet and one that I feel is much more successful and sustainable for the long haul. Because I've been at this now for almost 10 years. Hello, it's not difficult. It really isn't. It just works once you get the hang of it. So instead of eating, you know, all these snack foods, which are so easy to grab and taste good, you know, go for a snack food like this. I know you're like, but this is convenient. Well, so is this. Your, your vegetables don't have to be fresh. You can use canned or frozen. Cut some corners, people. Make it easier on yourself. The point is to eat and eat healthy enough where you're not so snacky for all that other stuff. You wanna lose weight, stay full, stay satisfied, be nutritious, and take care of your body in different ways like that. I hope that makes sense. My sixth tip for you is that I want you to stop calling this whole lifestyle a diet. <sighs> Every time I hear that word, I'm like, oh no. For me, when I hear someone using the word diet, I think, you know what, that's kind of implying that it's temporary, isn't it? When you say diet, I know that technically diet means the way you eat or um, like from a medical standpoint, but what I hear people use it is more like, oh, I'm gonna go on a diet and lose 10 pounds and then what? Go back to the old ways, right? The old ways of crappy food eating. <laughs> I know I love this. It kills me. It makes me laugh. But it's true. Every time you say the word diet, if you're saying it in this way, I'm hearing you're going to go back to your old crappy ways pretty soon. That it's just a short stop. So stop using that word. Stop saying diet. Go back to way of eating instead. Don't say diet, replace it with, this is my lifestyle, this is my way of eating, this is a permanent change, I'm taking care of my body. Find different words to explain what you're doing other than diet, which may imply you're going back to your old crappy ways. <laughs> For reals. Did I make you laugh? Love it. Um, tell me what, um, what do you think about that? Does that make sense to you? Is that resonating? What tip do you like so far? Because you know I'm going to be giving away this prize. 
Oh yeah, we like prizes. Should we do another prize too? Oh, one more prize? Let's see what we can give away. Oh, woo, it's gonna be a cookbook. Hello. So not only are we gonna be giving away a blue Dirty Lazy Keto cutting board today in the comments at random, I'll also choose somebody to win a free Dirty Lazy Keto cookbook. Love it, love it. See, you're getting all excited now. Now everyone's typing. I can share, I can share. <laughs> okay, so tip number seven, and this one is serious. I want you to get as much support as possible in 2022. And that can look a lot of different ways. The way we get support can be digital, it can be online, it can be in person, it can be from family or friends, but you've got to get some kind of support and method of encouragement, okay? I can be that person for you. I'm here on YouTube. I'm here in the Facebook premium support group. I'm here in the Facebook um, big group. I have a ton of books out there for you that you can read. I've got the videos. Another great resource is my newsletter. Are you signed up for my newsletter? It's free. You just sign in at dirtylazyketo.com. The first screen will ask you, get started, name, email. I don't sell your email to anyone. This is just for me. And I'll put you on my free newsletter list and I'll send you a cool update every couple days just to keep you inspired, a reminder, a tip, um, just something fun to keep you going. And a lot of people will ask me like if I have a vacation for like a week off, they'll say, where's my newsletter? I haven't been getting my newsletter. I'm like, okay, I'm back, I'm back. So cute. So there's a lot of different ways that you can get support. Um, I think a lot of folks have found that the Dirty Lazy Keto Get Started Losing Weight While Breaking the Rules book. A lot of people find this to be their most essential support tool in the whole deal. And yes, it is probably at your library. It's been out for a while now since March of last year. So there's enough copies floating around that you could even get it from the library. It's on audiobook if you want to listen to it um, or read it. It's a USA Today bestseller. I know you're going to love it and find it very helpful. Um, in fact, at the very back are a ton of um, reviews and things that people have shared. And I want to read you one of them that makes me laugh. I wish they put on the cover because it cracks me up. I, I need to find out who wrote this. She wrote, Stephanie is like the coach, friend, sister, and drinking buddy I've always wanted. <laughs> Talking the way she talks, helping with the things I need, and completely real with advice. I love that. That's on page 336. And there's all sorts of wonderful comments that people have written. Um, I know on Amazon you can read all of the reviews, and I think there's like, I don't know. At uh, least 10,000 maybe positive reviews, maybe like 14,000, 12, I don't know. I've lost count. At 10,000, I lost count. Um, but seriously, the reviews are touching and amazing, and they tell stories about how this has changed their life and their way of eating and their health, and it's really inspiring. So get the support you need. That is tip number seven. I don't want you to go at this alone. Whether um, you want links to any of the resources I mentioned, you could always go to my website, right? DirtyLazyKeto.com. Um, also, the links to join some of those support groups that I mentioned would be on the Facebook business page, and that's at Facebook.com forward slash Dirty Lazy Keto, and also on YouTube at Dirty Lazy Keto, which I'm sure you're familiar with. So there's lots of great ways to get that support, but you need it. It's part of the process. Um, I know, I know, the Dirty Lazy Keto is the best way to lose weight in 2022 because it is a lifestyle that you can do forever. It's healthy, it's sustainable, it's doable, and it's normal food, normal people food. No supplements, no gadgets, no breathalyzers, no supplements, no pills, none of that. Regular food from normal grocery stores in your community. That's all you need. Once you figure it out, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm doing it. So I hope that you'll keep in touch with me and share with me all of your progress because I want to be here to support you along the way. I'm going to be your person. So I'm here to help you guys. Can I give you a big round of applause? Round of applause. Round of applause. Because weight loss transformation is possible and I do believe in you. I know you can do it. So give yourself a pat on the back. And you can stay tuned and click on to the ketosis episode signs and symptoms about ketosis, which will be linked up next. Pretty good, right? I know. I know you love it. It works, you guys. It works. It works. 
It works, it works, it works.